Amen. 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 We give God praise. We give him glory. We give him honor because we have victory. Victory in Jesus. Come on, somebody, and say amen. Type amen in the chat. We have victory in Jesus. Victory because of the sacrifice of Christ. And that is always something that we can give God praise for, give God glory for, and give God honor for. Amen and amen. Thank you again, Breath of Life Praise Team, for leading us in worship and reminding us of the victory that we have in Jesus. Let's just say another quick word of prayer. Father God, we thank you that in you, we have victory and it's not by our strength and it's not by our power, but it is because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. So we just say thank you, Lord, as we now turn to your word, I ask that you would speak through us, that you would bless us as we look at your word today. I pray all these things in Jesus name. Let everybody say amen and amen, amen, and amen. So, you know, we're still in our vision series. And now I guess you could say we're in a sub-series of our vision series. And we're talking about salt, fat, acid, and heat. So we're looking at object lessons of how cooking can reveal to us the type of Christians that we should be. We're talking about how God's ultimate vision for us is really very basic. It is for us to be change agents, for us to bring about positive spiritual change in the world around us. And with those that we come in contact with, that is God desire for all of his believers, but we know it varies based on our gifts and our talents and where we are in life. So how we bring about change is not a one size fits all, but it varies. And so we're looking at the different ways in which God calls us to be agents of change, how God calls us to bring about his vision of change in the world. And so last week we talked about salt and how salt, what makes it powerful is that it is what's called a stable compound. Salt is distinct. It is not changed or influenced by its environment, yet salt is is always changing whatever it comes in contact with. And so we as believers need to be the same by staying anchored and rooted and grounded in Christ. We can be like salt where we are not influenced by our environment, but instead we act as an agent of change. And we talked about in order for salt to manifest this ability, it has to be fully engaged. So in other words, salt cannot hang out in the salt shaker. It has to get out of the salt shaker and be used by the master chef. And that is what God is calling us to do. So we looked at Jesus's words when he said, you are the salt of the earth. And so Jesus was calling those that he was speaking to, to be unafraid when they go out into the world. And so today we're going to look at fat. We're going to look at fat. And so to anchor our sermon, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter two, and I'll read to you verses eight through 10. Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through 10, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And this is what it says. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. And here's our focus. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. I'm going to read verse 10 one more time for emphasis. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us 
long ago. So today we're going to be talking about from pain to pressure to performance, from pain to pressure to performance. So I shared with you that last week that the inspiration for this sermon series came from a cookbook. And in the cookbook, the author is explaining how salt, fat, acid, and heat work as change agents. And so there are sections of the book where she really gets down to the basics and to the nitty gritty. And so with fat, she was talking about how fat can be used in three ways. It can be used as seasoning. It can be used as a main ingredient and it can be used as a cooking medium. So with seasoning, think of this, think of butter on a corn, a cob of corn. So you have corn on the cob. What is corn on the cob without some butter melting on top of it? Think of olive oil on top of fresh tomatoes and cucumbers. Think of butter on top of popcorn. Think of fresh baked bread, warm baked bread dipped in oil. This is where the fat is being used as a seasoning. It is enhancing the flavor. Even just butter on a slice of bread is good than just plain bread by itself. Fat can be used to season things. It can be used also as a main ingredient. For those of you that love pound cake, it's Mother's Day. And how many mothers have that special pound cake recipe that everybody loves? You cannot have pound cake without butter. You cannot have a croissant without butter. You cannot have pesto without oil. These are main ingredients. But our focus for today is going to be fat that is used as a cooking medium. So fat that is used to fry or to saute or even to warm up food. Fat is used as a cooking medium. And so as I was continuing to read in her book, she was talking about there's different types of fat. You know, you have butter, you have margarine, you have lard, and then you have all of these oils. And she said, true fat produces oil. And that's when they started to really capture my attention. True fat produces oil. So butter, while we do consider it a fat, is not a true fat because butter does not produce oil. Butter is just made from churning cream. That's all that it is. So true fat is what we would consider peanuts and olives and avocados because from these items, you can get oil, grape seed, and coconut. These are true fats because they produce oil. And if you are already thinking like me, you already know where I'm going with this when it talks about fat and true fat being able to produce oil. We know as believers that we are to show evidence that the Holy Spirit is living within us. And the Holy Spirit is oftentimes used and given as an example, the use of oil. Oil represents the Holy Spirit. And so true Christians are like true fat. You're only a real Christian if the Holy Spirit is within you. If you can produce the fruit of the Spirit, which is evidence that the Holy Spirit lives within you. Likewise, a true fat is only that if it produces oil. So this oil that comes from olives and that comes from peanuts and comes from coconut and avocado, I started to do some research because she explains it a little in her cookbook that this process is not a simple and easy extraction process. You know, you know this, think about it. You pick up an olive and if you squeeze it, no oil is going to come out of that olive. If you take just a regular salad, olive, black olives or green olives, if you just press it yourself, you're not going to get a drop of oil to come out of these olives. So I'm like, how in the world does oil, olive oil come from this little olive? What is the process that this olive must go through this extraction process? And so as I began to research it, man, I saw spiritual applications all over the place. So 
the olive first, we're going to just use olives as an example today, but the plant, whatever it is, it must be mature and fully developed. And then it goes through this intense and prolonged pressuring process where you mash it and mash it and mash it. And some items have to be dry roasted before the mashing. But you, once you get that mature plant, you now put it through this process where it is squished and mashed and squeezed. And from this application of intense pressure, then oil begins to manifest. Oil is now able to be extracted from this process. Now, olives actually go through this process twice. So they go through this intense mashing and then they go through it again. And then after this mashing, this pressing has taken place, then you can begin to strain it and separate it. So you get all of the, the squished pieces of olive and then you actually get the oil. You strain it and separate it. And as I looked at that process, the first thing I thought was it's painful. And we as believers have to go through similar processes in order for the Holy Spirit to be extracted, to come forth, to manifest in our lives. And another word for this process is called dying to self daily. Each day we have to mash and push down our push down against our natural desires to be sinful, to be selfish and mean and focused on ourselves and not not thinking about others and just all of the ways that we desire naturally to just rebel against God. God takes us through this process of helping us deny ourselves, dying to our flesh so the Holy Spirit can be made manifest in our lives. Come on, somebody, and say amen, that as believers, we must go through painful processes to produce the Holy Spirit, to manifest the Holy spirit. This process is not a simple and easy process, but we can give God glory because he controls the process. God controls the process. And too many times we want to go from an olive state to immediately being able to be a bottle full of olive oil. And we have to look at what the olive actually goes through. And we have to go through similar changes. I wish I had time to unmute and let some of you all speak to how you had to grow in Christ before you could actually say, man, I am olive oil. I am now this type of fat. I'm not just an olive olive anymore, but the Holy Spirit lives in me. But I had to go through some trials and I had to go through some challenges and I had to go through some difficulties in order to grow, in order to stretch, in order to be mashed, in order to now say I can be used the way God desires to use me. So when we look at this process of being fat, I'm here today to tell you to endure this process, to stick it out, to not quit, to not give up, because God is saying, while I do not want to inflict pain on you just because, there is no other way for me to teach you patience. You don't learn patience by being in situations that are not frustrating. Patience is not going to naturally come. That's why you got to be careful when you pray some of these prayers, when you ask God to grow grow you and to stretch you, many times he now places you in a situation that requires the thing that you lack. When you pray and ask God for self-control, sometimes you will find temptation when you pray and ask God to be able to control your temper. You keep finding yourself around people that get on your nerves. When you pray and ask God for strength, sometimes you find yourself in challenging situations. And it's not that God is being cruel and it's not that he's picking on you. God is saying, I have now, you have now entered into the extraction process. And my son, my daughter, I'm going to grow you. I'm going to strengthen you, not because I'm evil, but because I have a goal in mind. I see olive oil in you where I can use you to be a cooking medium. I can use you to be an agent of change in the lives of others. So hang in there. Don't quit and don't give up. And as we look at this painful process, we also have to realize that this is not something that is just specific to you. 
This is something that every single believer has to go through. And this is why, family, it is important for us to share how we grow in the Lord, for us to share our testimonies, because for those that are younger in the faith and newer in the faith, they can be going through this extraction process and they can be thinking it's a punishment for their sin and that God is now rebuking them or chastising them, that God is trying to get them when all God is doing is growing them. He is preparing them. He is shaping them and making them better. And that is why we who are a little bit further along down the road, we who may have some experience more than others, we need to share. I remember when I was trying to overcome that challenge. I remember when God was teaching me patience and teaching me kindness and God was trying to set me up so he could manifest his Holy Spirit within me. I remember the pain and the challenges and the difficulties we need to share these testimonies so people do not think it's just them, that they're the only ones struggling with trying to get spiritual discipline and learning how to pray daily and to study the word of God daily and thinking that something is wrong with them because they're struggling to overcome this. We must share that I've gone through this experience and there is a blessing on the other side, that God is walking with you. He is faithful in in this process, but it is a painful process. But when you allow yourself to go through it, God now sets you up to be used in a mighty way. So we know that we have to experience pain. You can look at biblical examples, the life of David. He was anointed with the spirit of God, but David went through an extraction process. Before he was King David and a valiant warrior, he experienced pain. Think of it this way. When the prophet came to see David's family, David wasn't even invited. David wasn't even considered important enough by his family standards. And David was the one that God sent the prophet to go see. He had to go through this process of learning and growing and being stretched and all of these things for him to be able to bear the Holy Spirit, to manifest the Holy Spirit. And just as God took David and countless others in the Bible through this process, he will take you through this process. So we have these olives. We have this fat that is now gone through this painful process of being pressed and being squished and having what seems like the very life squished out of them. But what we have at the end of it is this oil, this oil that has now been sifted and this oil that has been, that has been separated, this oil that has been strained and now it is ready to be used. And you think in the life of oil that now things are good, but let's really pause and think about oil as a cooking medium. See, oil can only be used to cook things when it is heated. So now true fat goes from pain to now pressure and not pressure in terms of applying weight, but pressure in terms of now being heated to extremely high temperatures. Because in order for you to fry something, to cook something, to saute something, you don't turn the pan on low and then put the oil in it. You have to make sure that that oil is heated up and warm. See, room temperature oil is not a cooking medium. Room temperature oil does not cook anything. So while this oil now has gone through this process of being squeezed and, and painfully extracted from the olive. Now it gets to be heated to hundreds of degrees. I was looking at the, the, the smoke point for various types of oil. Think of it this way. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why you can burn yourself with boiling water oil has a higher smoke point and a higher boiling point. So when you fry your chocolates or when you fry your french fries or when you fry your chicken, it is at a temperature that is well above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It's closer to 300 or 400 degrees Fahrenheit in order for the food to be cooked. So now the oil has gone from this painful situation to now being in heated 
situations. And the blessing is that because the fat has gone through this process, it is prepared to endure the heat and the pressure of being heated at such a high temperature. I hope you all get it. When we go through these difficulties and these challenges in our lives and God grows us and stretches us, we know that being in difficult situations is not over. But because we now have the Holy Spirit being manifested within us, you can handle the pressure that comes from being in heated situations. Come on, somebody, and say amen. Because you have allowed God to prepare you, you have allowed God to shape you and to mold you, you can now handle the pressure and the expectation that it takes, the commitment that it takes to now be in heated situations. Because the goal for this oil is to be a cooking medium. The goal is to get it to the point where it can endure heated situations to be used for God's glory and to be used for the benefit of others. But if that oil is not extracted properly, it cannot do the work that needs to be done. If you were to take an olive and try and heat it to 400 degrees or to take a peanut and try and heat it to 400 degrees, it would not be able to endure that process. But there's something within that peanut. There's something within the avocado. There's something within the coconut that has now been extracted that can endure hundreds of degrees of heat. And I'm here to tell you that there is something within you that can endure the challenges of life. There's something within you that can endure the pain and the difficulties and not just endure it, but be a blessing to others. Because again, our focus here is that this oil is being used as a cooking medium. So this oil has now gone from pain. Now it is able to endure the pressure, the heated pressure. But the last thing is performance. See, what's amazing about this, the whole point of what I'm trying to tell you today is that God wants to use us in the transformation process of the lives of others. Oil is not just used to heat things up, but oil is used as a cooking medium. So what that does is it doesn't just, when you fry something, you don't just change the way it looks on the outside, somebody. You don't just change the way that potato looks. It doesn't just now become golden brown and crispy on the outside, but you have now cooked the inside of it. That potato has now gone through a transformation. And what God wants to do with us is he wants to be able to drop people in your life. And now you not only help them look different on the outside, but we get to participate in spiritual transformation from the inside out. So you don't just help people dress better and go to the right places and get rid of some difficult and bad habits. God now wants you to be a part of helping somebody be patient and kind and have work ethic and be, and have integrity and not to do the things Things that they used to do to have a changed and transformed character. God wants to use us as a part of his change process. That is the whole goal of using oil as a cooking medium. And that is what God is trying to do with us. So he moves us from pain to pressure to performance. So we can now partner with him, work with him to help transform people from unsaved to save. Come on, somebody and say amen. To help move people from being dead in their sins to now being alive in Christ with eternal life to changing hearts and minds and lives so they don't think the way they used to, but now they think with the mind of Christ. They don't love the way they used to. They love with the heart of Christ. They don't walk and do the things that they used to do. Now, everything they do has the goal of giving God glory and honor. 
God wants to drop people into the breath of life fellowship so we can help transform them, not just clean them up and teach them how to speak the way Adventists speak and to do the things that Adventists do, but he wants to drop people into our church so we can help them overcome, so we can help them have victory, so we can help them be saved. And we can only do that by going through this process of moving from pain to pressure and now to performance. God wants to use us as a master chef uses oil. Come on, somebody, and say amen. You'll never look at an olive the same way again. You'll never look at an avocado the same way again. You'll never look at a bottle of vegetable oil the same way again. The very thing that we use this oil for, God wants to use us in a spiritual way in the lives of others. That is his vision for us. But see, if you notice, I kept saying God wants us to help in the transformation process because sometimes we can get ahead of ourselves and we think that we control the transformation process so we want people to transform the way we want them to we want them to overcome their sin the way that we want we have our own opinions and ideas about what this process looks like and when it's finished and when it has started and we sometimes yes we can get in the way but Again, when it comes to using oil, who makes the decision of what oil to use? Who makes the decision of how high the temperature should be? Who makes the decision of how long you put the food in the oil? It is the chef that does it. And likewise, God does the same thing in our lives because oil is not the same across the board. What you use peanut oil for is not the same thing that you use coconut oil for. And it's not the same thing that you use grapeseed oil for, and it's not the same thing that you use sesame seed oil for. But how do you know the difference? The master chef knows the difference. He knows the flavor of each type of oil. He knows the cooking time of each type of oil. He knows the temperature where if I make it any higher, that oil is going to now burn and smoke and it will not be able to do what I have desired it to do. The master chef knows all of this. So he knows that I need to place certain people in your life because there is something about you that God has created you to be an extra special blessing and benefit to that person. There's something about our church where God says, I can't send these people to any of these other churches because there's something about the character and the flavor and the characteristic of breath of life that when I send them to breath of life fellowship, that is when they will experience optimal transformation. And that only comes from us submitting to God and allowing him to lead us and to guide us. We cannot say that, we cannot think that all Christians function the same way and it's not a need to compare who's better or who's smarter or who's this or who's that, but it's realizing that we serve a God that created variety and God says, I have blessings in place to meet the needs of everyone who is in need. God says, I have individuals. That's why we have different spiritual gifts and different talents and different personalities because God knows that there are some environments that people are going to thrive better in than others. So we have to let God use us the way that he sees fit. We can make mistakes when we're trying to work in areas where God says, I didn't create you to do that. That's not what I wanted you to do. I need, I need you to be this type of oil. I need you to work in this type of way. And so when we surrender and submit like oil surrenders and submits to the master chef, God is able to use us in a powerful and mind-blowing and transformative way in the lives of others. So family, the whole point of today, last week we talked about being salt. We are to be salt and we are to be fat. We are to be oil. We are to be cooking mediums. We are to be used by God to be a part of the beautiful transformation process of finding people who are dead in their sins and introducing them to a God who will give them everlasting life. But like we read in the scripture today in Ephesians, it says that we can't take credit for this. 
because we are God's masterpiece. We were just olives, but because we went through that process, now we're oil able to be used in amazing ways. So again, I'm gonna end by reading Ephesians again. God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none can boast it about it, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. When God created the very foundation of the world, he saw all of us and he knew that we would be here and he created us to do good things. But because of sin, now we do have to go through this extraction process. But when we allow God to lead us through this process, we know that there is something good within us. And it's not just because of what we have done, it is because of who he is. God will give us his Holy Spirit and then now take us through this process so we can manifest this Holy Spirit so we can now help transform the lives of others. That is what God has called us to do. That is his vision for us. That is his mission for us as believers. So family, I wanna encourage you to commit yourself to be fat. Commit yourself to allow God to use you, to mold you and to shape you and allow him to sustain you knowing that he will not harm you. He will not harm you beyond repair. He will not break you. He will not make it so that you are useless, but everything he does is so you can be useful. So you can do the good works that he planned for you long ago. Let us pray. Father God, we just bless you and glorify you. God, we thank you that we can look in the world and get lessons on how you desire to use us. Lord, who would have thought that we could learn through the experience that fat goes through to manifest oil, that we could learn something about how you desire to use us. But God, we thank you and we give you glory. God, I thank you for this gift of salvation that you have given us. And now, Lord, because we have this gift, may we surrender and submit to your will and your ways of growing us and maturing us, of extracting the Holy Spirit from within us so we can now be amazing mediums, spiritual mediums of good, of being a part of the transformation process in the lives of others. God, thank you for being willing to use us like that. Lord, we don't deserve it. We're not worthy of it, but God, you see good within us. You've created good within us. And God, we thank you for that. So Lord, help us again to surrender and submit to your process so we can be used in the lives of others. Bless us all, I pray in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen and amen. Amen.